It's kind of hard to see up under there, but a Jaguar rear end can easily look at home under other vehicles, such as a Ford Mustang. Greetings, fellow DIYer. This is going to be a series of videos pertaining specifically to the Jaguar independent rear suspension. I put one in my 64 and a half Ford Mustang, made it a bolt-in, and I put together an extensive web page on the subject. Lots of people have had questions, several people have used my information and done the exact same mod to their Mustangs. I thought I'd do put this together because to provide some generic information uh, because this is a really easy, well, relatively easy, okay, not that easy swap. But if you can do some basic fabrication, you would be able to install this type of rear end in just about any vehicle. So the first thing we have on this assembly is the Salisbury differential. Now, a lot of people think, oh, if I go with a Jaguar, it's going to be foreign and parts are going to be hard to find. The nice thing about a Salisbury differential is, for all intents and purposes, it's basically a Dana 44. In fact, other than having to use some odd bearings and things, you can put Dana 44 ring gear, pinion gear, and carriers inside this unit. So really, it's a Dana 44, parts are easy to get, and the foreign aspect is not an issue. Also, when all of these were originally made by Spicer to send over to England, they were all done here in the United States, which means they all use Imperial fasteners. This is a half inch bolt hole. This one, I believe, is 7 16 This is a standard Chevy U joint. This U joint that goes right here, uh, this piece right there, that's a standard Ford U joint. So all these pieces are relatively easy to get. Uh, maintenance is not that hard, and you know, you can easily work on a unit like this. Now here on the other end, we have the upright. This is an aluminum casting. Uh, you've got the hub assembly. There's a U-joint inside this part of it that uh, connects the, um, the stub axle here to the half shaft. The bolt pattern on this is five on four and three quarters, which is a typical Chevy bolt pattern. But there's a lot of meat here. On my project, I wanted a five on four and a half, and I used a simple jig to convert my pattern to the Ford bolt pattern. The next piece of the system is this right here, and that's the half shaft, and that connects the carrier to the differential. Now this is just basically dog bone type uh, axle, and it's solid, but it's pretty easy to shorten, lengthen, modify, and that's something that any drive line shop can do. Underneath that, we have the wishbone, which is this piece right here, and uh, it connects to the carrier, and it connects to the differential. And again, it's really simple to shorten or lengthen. You just cut it. Uh, when I did mine, I cut it. I had a sleeve made that went inside, welded the whole thing up, and then we actually gusseted across where it was cut but really easy to modify. And because you have the wishbone or lower control arm, and then what holds the upright up is the half shaft, there's no extra modifications to make. You don't have to shorten an upper control arm because this shaft serves as the upper control arm. I think it's the ease of shortening that makes these such a popular independent rear end suspension swap for vehicles. There's not a lot of geometry change if you take four inches out of here and four inches out of here. It's going to function almost as designed. In fact, that's the way Jaguar did it over their various cars. The XKE had a much narrower rear, rear end. This came out of an XJS. And when I took measurements of an XKE rear end compared to an XJS, all they did was narrow up the upper arm and lower arm equally. So that's proof of concept that you're really not going to overly affect the suspension geometry just by lengthening or shortening these two pieces. On this end, this is where your brakes would go if you uh, choose to do inboard brakes. 
if you want to do externally mounted brakes on this end, later model XJSs have a hub that has the brakes on the outside. So that's an option. Um, it's better for handling to have the brakes inboard because that gives you less unsprung weight out here but they're a little harder to work on. So that's why with later models, they went to hub mounted brakes. The last basic component to this rear end is the coilover shock. I have one right here. The unit originally came with four of them. There was one here and one here, and then matching on the other side. With the original Jaguar design, all this fits in a handy cage. But for your application, you may want to do it differently than that. When I put one in my Mustang, I did not utilize the cage because I did not have a lot of real estate to work with. I'm thinking of putting this one in my Galaxy, or at least parts of it. And for that one, I probably will utilize the cage because it'll make for a simpler install. And under the Galaxy, I have a lot more room. So this is how I change the bolt pattern on mine. I was thinking and thinking of what's the best way that I could drill this out. I thought about taking it into a professional shop, but that kind of goes against my DIY attitude and way of doing things. I thought about making a jig and spending a lot of time measuring and remeasuring that had 10 holes on it. Five holes that match the bolt pattern here, and then five holes that allow me to draw, drill pilot holes here, 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 and here to get the new Ford pattern. Then it occurred to me, I was overthinking things. All I had to make was a simple three hole jig. By installing this jig right here on these studs, that allows me to drill the pilot hole. Then I can take and move it to the next spot and drill the next pilot hole. As long as I keep the orientation the same, in other words, this side up, even if this hole is off just a little bit, it's going to be off consistently all the way around, which means all five holes will be perfectly aligned compared to one another. I actually sell jigs like this now that I have uh, laser cut that are a little nicer than this one, but I keep this one because it's the original one that I made to solve the problem that I had. There you have it, the first video in this series that I'm putting together on the JAG IRS. If you're looking for Jaguar independent rear suspension parts, or any Jaguar part for that matter, I would recommend going to Everyday XJ. They have fantastic parts at a fantastic price. Also, check out my website, www.dayscars.com. In the tech pages, there are at least seven pages detailing this project and all the work that I did to put the JAG IRS underneath my Mustang. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.